This is vlog number one of my poker journey, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Let's get it. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Kenichi, aka Nietzsche, aka Resauce from KN Poker, and I've been wanting to vlog my poker journey for a long time now. I play mostly low to mid six cash games, and I can't wait to start posting videos and enjoy the process along the way. I've had a lot of influence, especially in the social media, YouTube realm. You know, we're talking about the OGs of poker vlogging like Nimi and Owen. And then the guys with super high production levels like Jamin Burton, Johnny Vibes, Mariano. And then you have some of my favorites, Andrew Locke, Rampage Poker, Suited Superman on Instagram. In some way, shape or form, all of these guys have influenced me into creating my own content and giving back to the poker community since I've gained so much entertainment and knowledge from them. Now, I know you guys are here for one reason and one reason only. It's to see some hands. Let's hit the felt. So in our first hand, we are five-handed, and we pick up ace, eight of hearts in the big blind. Under the gun, plus one, raises to ten, small blind calls, and we call. So we're going three ways to the flop. The flop is ten, nine, three, two hearts. So we flop the NFT. It gets checked through, and the turn is the queen of hearts. So we just binked the nut flush. Here's where it gets interesting. Small blind looks like he's going to bet out 20. And the button looks like he's going to call. But the small blind checks to us. And we observe that the button sees the check and is still wanting to place a bet. So we throw him the rope and we check to him. He bets out 20. Pretty small. The small blind min raises to 40. Now we're thinking that maybe the small blind has some sort of small flush. Maybe a straight. And the button is probably just going to leave the hand. So let's try to get... A lot of the money in since the small blind only has 240 behind so we make it 120 to go surprisingly enough the button ships in 600 now it's up to the small blind and he tanks for maybe 30 seconds and he calls off his remaining 240 obviously this is a dream situation unless somebody has exactly king jack of hearts so we snap call the river is kind of a bad card it's the nine of clubs pairing the board so we lose to a full house the button shakes his head and shows ace jack offsuit with the jack of hearts so he actually had the open-ended straight flush draw on the turn small blind shows six three of hearts he has a smaller flush so we show down and we have a winner in this hand we are five-handed again and we have two queens in the big blind under the gun makes it 20. there's a call from the button and the small blind the original Razor has about 260 behind, so we make it 120. Without even thinking, she ships it all in. It gets folded to us, and obviously we make the call. The board runs out, King 10, 9, 7, 3. She shows Queen Queen. Chop it up. We are now six-handed in the hijack, and we have Ace 3 of Diamonds. Under the gun plus one makes it 20. We call. Cutoff makes it 60. And this is the same player that three bet me in the previous hand. She's been very active three betting, but showing good hands. Under the gun calls and we make the call. So we are going three ways to the flop and the flop is king, 10, four, two diamonds. It checks to us and we donk lead for five. Now, lots of people don't know what to do with a min donk lead, especially without top pair or better. So we just want to gauge her temperature. She makes it 100. 
with only 160 behind. This seems like a very strong move. Under the gun folds, and we make the call. Turn is the eight of clubs. We check, and she ships it in for 160. Now, here's where we make a mistake. We call without the proper odds, and the river is no help. It's the king of spades. Once again, she shows two queens. Now, I guess we could have shipped the flop since we're not folding to any turn bet there, but it didn't seem to there didn't seem to be a lot of fold equity. We should have just folded on the turn. So we fold for a few orbits and we look down at ace four of spades in the small blind. It gets folded to us and we raise to 15. The big blind makes the call. The flop is king jack four, two spades. So we flop a bottom pair plus the NFD. We lead out for 20 and she makes the call. This is the same one that's been kicking our butt all morning. She's been showing up with queens about four times today. So it seems like she does have strong hands, especially if she's putting money into the pot. The turn is the 10 of clubs. Now we down bet to 15 to see where she's at. And she makes it 55. Now we have a gut shot to Broadway and we still have the NFD. So we make the call. The river's an interesting one. It's an ace. If she has a straight, she's good, but does she have exactly ace queen or queen nine? I have a feeling ace queen probably would have three bet me from the big blind. And if she does have a hand like queen nine, then we can bet fold this river because we still beat all of her two pairs that hit on the turn. But is she really going to call with a one-liner to the straight? Eh, probably not. So we make the chicken play. We check instead of thin, thin value. And we show. She says, you're good. She had the king with a club draw. Now we get involved in a, a straddle pot. So we have jack 10 off under the gun. Technically, it's under the gun plus one. But with the straddle, we are under the gun to the straddle. So we make it 25. The cutoff calls and the big blind call. So now we're going three ways to the flop, which is 873. So we flop two overs and a gutty. It checks to us and we bet 35. The cutoff folds and the big blind check raises us to 75. It's such a small check raise. He probably just believes that we have maybe Ace high, no draw, trying to get us off of our hand, thinks that we're bluffing, which we kind of are. We're semi-bluffing. So we call with two overs and our gutty. The turn pairs the top card. It brings an eight. He checks to us. Now, this is weird because if he had an eight, he would probably try to still get thin value out of us. Even if he had a seven, he might get value, but maybe he's scared that we have nines through queens and we did not three bet him on the flop so with that said we check back and the river is the ten of diamonds so it brings the back door flush he checks to us again now here i think we're ahead and we need to get thin value out of all sevens and possibly even small pocket pairs maybe even if he has ace high and is just a non-believer so we elect to go with a bet size of 75. He ponders for a bit and says, I want to see it and makes the call. We show and we win. Once again, we get tangled up in the blinds with the player that has been beating us in almost every single pot. It gets folded to us and we have ace queen. So we make it 20. She once again, three bets us to 60. We're not too sure if at this point she's always three betting us with big hands or if now she's just taking advantage of her image. Um, we have not seen her actually show down a bad hand. So kind of have to believe her at a certain point, right? Either way, we make the call and the flop is 
King King 4. We check and she fires out 70. We just fold. We haven't seen her take the aggressive action with a bluff yet, so we're going to respect her bet. Maybe next time we'll have to take a different course of action. The only reason that we are noting this hand is because she keeps 3-betting me all the time. Alright, so this is a weird kind of cool hand. We have 10-4 offsuit in the big blind. The cutoff calls, the small blind completes, and we check. So we're going three ways to the flop. The flop is a jack 4-3. It checks to us, and we bet $5. We have middle pair. Why not? The cutoff calls, and now the dealer doesn't see the small blind's hand. As the small blind was thinking about putting out a call, the dealer turns the turn card, and it's the seven of clubs. You'll realize why the seven of clubs is kind of a crucial card in this situation. We tell the dealer that the big blind hasn't acted yet, and he has to call the floor for a ruling. For those who don't know what the normal ruling is, the player who hasn't acted yet now has to complete his action. The dealer will burn and turn the next card, which would have been the river card, but now it's the turn card, and they do this to make sure that the least amount of cards are affected by this. Then action pursues. So the turn card, a.k.a. the river card, is a four of diamonds. So we have three of a kind. Small blind checks, and we bet 20. The cutoff folds, and the small blind makes the call. Now the river is the three of clubs, which now it's a double paired board, and we essentially have the nuts, especially with the type of action. So he checks to us. And we think about this hand and this certain player type. Now, this player is heavily weighted toward a three and missed draws. If he has nothing, we're not going to get value anyways. He's extremely sticky, and it seems like he was very disgruntled by what had happened on the turn. So he might be slightly tilted and ready to give his money away. He has about 320 in front of him. I know the pot is small, but this is a super exploitative play. And we choose a polarized size bet of all in. He thinks and is not too happy about it, but then disgruntledly calls. We show and we have the best hand. He shows 7-3 offsuit. Now, this type of bet is the overbet for value play. Versus a specific opponent. I normally wouldn't recommend this to everybody, but this was a weird hand, and I felt that he really wanted that seven, and because the seven did not come, he might have just called off because he was very angry with what happened. What's weird is that the seven actually would have made him two pair, and I possibly still could have hit the four on the river if he lets me get there. So might not have gotten full stacks in, but kind of a cool hand to talk about. Everybody loves a suited one gapper. So here we go. Here's our suited one gapper hand. We have seven five of diamonds in the cutoff. Under the gun raises to 15. Under the gun plus one calls. We call and the big blank calls. So we're going four ways to the flop of five, three, 10. So we flop middle pair and a BDFD. It checks to the PFR, and she makes it 25. Under the gun plus one calls, we call, and the big blind calls. The turn is the queen of diamonds. Now, it gets checked around, but we did pick up our BDFD. And the river is the six of diamonds. Bingo. Checks to the under the gun plus one, and he bets 40. Now, I'm hoping he has maybe two pair, maybe four deuce, something good to get value out of. So we make it 200, and it gets folded to him, and he folds, unfortunately. But we do pick up that hand. All right, so this is the last notable hand of the session, and we have eight six of hearts on the button. Limp under the gun. Cutoff raises to 20. We make the call. Big blind calls and 
under the gun calls. The flop is queen eight four with one heart. So we flop middle pair with a BDFD. It gets checked to the cutoff. He bets 30. We call and the big blind calls. So we're going three ways to the turn. The turn is a really good card for us. It's the seven of hearts. So now it gives us a gut shot with the flush draw. The big blind now fires out 100. Cutoff calls and we can make a move here or call and try to realize our equity on the river. So we elect to call. Now the river is a good one and a bad one. What I mean by that is it's the ace of hearts. So it's good because we fill up, but it's bad because now all queens are probably folding. But all two pairs with an ace will still call. So let's see how this goes. It checks to us and we size up to show strength, which also can be perceived as weakness. So we bet 315. And now it just goes fold fold. The cutoff shows queen jack off. Hindsight, if we target only queens and lower two pair, we could probably just put a bet of 100 or so just to get some value. Um, just something to think about. What would you have done? Leave your comments and decisions below. All right, guys, that's it for the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, subscribe, smash that like button, and hit that notification bell. Also, leave some comments below. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like. Until the next video, thanks for watching, and don't be stuck like a duck. Run like Usain Bolt.